In a small, quiet town in Niigata, Japan, something unthinkable happened. Sanjo, known for its peaceful streets and close-knit community, was shaken to its core in the fall of 1990. Fusako Sano, just nine years old and a big fan of baseball, vanished without a trace. One minute, she was a regular kid enjoying a school game. The next, she was gone. Days turned into months, then years, and Husako's story became a haunting mystery. Shockingly, Husako was held captive for an extended period of nine years by her kidnapper in his apartment. During this time, she was confined and not allowed to leave or have contact with the outside world. The circumstances of her captivity were extremely distressing, as she was not only isolated, but also subject to various forms of mistreatment. Let's delve deeper into the case. Sanjo, located in Niigata Prefecture, was far from a large town. In fact, it was quite modest. The air was clean, and the town was encircled by mountains, making it a pleasant place to live. It was here that Husako Sano was born and grew up. She lived with her parents, who cherished her dearly, and she enjoyed a happy childhood. It is known that Husako had a passion for sports, particularly baseball, and would attend games frequently, sometimes with her parents and other times alone. Given the small size of Sanjo, one wouldn't expect a tragic event to occur so suddenly. Tragically, being in the wrong place at the wrong time can lead to unforeseen consequences. On November 13, 1990, Husako had just watched a baseball game at her school and was on her way home. Unlike other students who were accompanied by friends or family, Husako was alone. She was simply enjoying her walk, unaware of any potential danger. Unknown to her, someone had been watching her since she left the school. During her walk, a car abruptly stopped beside her and an adult man emerged. Suddenly, Husako found herself threatened with a knife by the stranger. It's important to remember that Husako was only nine years old at the time. The knife pointed at her chest was approximately 19 centimeters long, and the man was significantly larger than her. Understandably, she was frightened when he threatened her, instructing her to get into the car or face harm. In fear for her life and trembling, Husako complied and entered the stranger's car, leading to her disappearance for several years. Who was the stranger behind Husako Sano's kidnapping? His name was Nobuyuki Sato. Born in July 1962, he was 28 years old at the time of the abduction. Details about Nobuyuki's early life are sparse, but let's delve into what is known. A key question arises, why did he kidnap Husako? Nobuyuki appears to have been an only child. There are no mentions of siblings in the available information. An intriguing aspect of his family background is that his mother married a much older man. As a result, Nobuyuki had an elderly father during his school years, which reportedly led to him being teased by peers, fostering resentment towards his parents. His relationship with his father was distant, with little effort made by either to bridge the gap. In contrast, Nobuyuki shared a close bond with his mother, who spoiled him. Throughout his life, his mother permitted him almost anything, a factor that played a significant role in his later actions. Notably, Nobuyuki's preferential treatment from his mother led him to eventually place his father in an elderly facility, where he passed away. After completing his education, Nobuyuki entered the automobile industry, though his exact role remains unclear. Possibly due to the absence of a strong paternal figure, he exhibited impulsive behavior and an intense preoccupation with cleanliness. While it might suggest obsessive-compulsive disorder, OCD, this has not been confirmed. 
His obsession with cleanliness was evident in his personal habits and reluctance to let others get close. A notable incident occurred at his workplace. Nobuyuki got spider webs on him and was so distressed that he went home, undertook excessive cleaning, and eventually quit his job. Following this, he lived with his mother, unemployed, and likely depended on her financially. Despite his reliance on his mother, Nobuyuki's volatile behavior was directed not only at others, but also at his own mother, who had been his primary supporter. Nobuyuki's behavior towards his mother was appalling. He would yell at her and even resorted to physical violence. At one point, he acquired a stun gun and used it on his mother multiple times. Despite the abuse, his mother, perhaps due to her kindness, never reported him to the police, allowing his abusive behavior to continue unchecked. There were reports that she sought help from a health department, but unfortunately, assistance never came. Nobuyuki's mental health issues seemed to spiral unchecked. How does someone decide to start kidnapping children? Interestingly, Husaku wasn't his first target. A year before her abduction, Nobuyuki had attempted to kidnap another child, but was caught. Surprisingly, he was only sentenced to a year in jail for what was considered his first offense. This lenient punishment allowed him to return to his criminal activities, which could have been prevented. After kidnapping Husaku, Nobuyuki brought her to the house he shared with his mother. To avoid detection, he used the back door, which led to stairs going up to the second floor. He confined Husako in his room, beginning her long ordeal of living with this troubled individual. For the next nine years, she would not step out of Nobuyuki's room. The search for Husako is a critical part of this story. On the day she disappeared, her parents, understandably panicked, reported her missing to the police. The search efforts were extensive, including ground and aerial searches and distributing posters. However, the efforts to find Husako gradually waned, particularly after December of the year she went missing. Despite the initial push to locate her, the trail soon went cold, leaving Husako in her hidden captivity for nearly a decade. As the search for Husako Sano continued with little success, a conspiracy theory emerged, overshadowing the actual efforts to find her. At that time, abductions by North Korean agents were a significant concern in Japan, leading some to speculate that Husako might have been taken to North Korea. This theory gained traction, especially since there was no trace of her even in neighboring towns. In reality, Husako was a mere 55 kilometers away from her hometown in Kashiwazaki. More frustratingly, she was being held just 200 meters from the nearest police substation. In kidnapping cases, there is often a fear of the worst outcomes, given the grim endings of many such incidents. Remarkably, Nobuyuki did not intend to harm Husako fatally. The reasons behind his actions remain unclear. According to reports and Nobuyuki's own confession, Husako was not subjected to sexual assault, as he claimed to see her as a family member. However, this doesn't make the situation any less horrific. Nobuyuki's treatment of Husako was cruel and inhumane. He never allowed her to leave the room, not even to use the bathroom. Instead, she had to use plastic bags for her bodily needs, which he would dispose of. Bathing was also a rare occurrence, limited to times when Nobuyuki deemed it necessary, as the bathroom was downstairs. Nobuyuki's abuse of Husako was frequent and brutal. He would physically assault her or use the stun gun on her, especially when he was in a bad mood or if Husako failed to meet his expectations. For instance, if she forgot to record horse races for him, she would be beaten. The stun gun attacks became so routine that Husaku eventually grew somewhat accustomed to the pain. Reports vary on how well Husaku was cared for during her nine years of captivity. Some sources suggest she was fed three times a day with quick bento boxes, while others claim she only received one meal daily. Regardless of the frequency, it was evident that Husako was severely malnourished, often too weak to stand or engage in other activities. 
The lack of sunlight and poor living conditions led to growth issues, frequent illness, and overall weakness. The information available indicates that Nobuyuki shared his own clothes with Husako, likely out of fear that buying her new clothes would either lead to her escape or raise suspicions. As a result, Husako had no choice but to wear his clothes, only changing when he permitted. Regarding Husako's attempt to escape, her situation was dire. Threatened and overpowered, it was challenging for a young girl to take action. Over time, she lost both the will and the energy to try escaping, resigning herself to her fate, perhaps clinging to the hope that her ordeal would one day end. Completely cut off from the outside world, with no access to television and only a radio for company, her existence was incredibly lonely and heartbreaking. It seems improbable that Nobuyuki's mother was completely unaware of another person in her house for nine years. There were signs Nobuyuki spent an unusual amount of time in his room. There were occasional noises and angry outbursts, and he reacted extremely negatively to his mother's attempts to go upstairs. The police too seemed to suspect her awareness, especially after finding feminine products in his house. It's speculated that while Nobuyuki might have purchased them, it's also possible that his mother did. As time went on, with days turning into months and years, Nobuyuki's abusive and erratic behavior persisted, both towards Husako and his own mother. Recall that Nobuyuki's mother had previously reached out to the health department, but was not taken seriously. On January 12, 2000, she contacted them again. It remains unclear whether this call was for her own situation or for the girl living in the upstairs room, Husako. The health department finally responded to the report and decided to visit Nobuyuki's house on January 28. Nobuyuki was clearly panicked when he saw the officials, particularly when they requested to inspect the house. This meant they would need to access the second floor where Husako was hidden. Despite Nobuyuki's resistance, he couldn't prevent the personnel from going upstairs. As expected, the officials discovered Husakusano huddled in a blanket. They immediately recognized something was terribly wrong upon seeing her frail, malnourished condition. A heartbreaking moment occurred when Husako, initially reluctant to leave, asked if she could stay in the room. The personnel gently convinced her that she would be safe and that it was time to leave with them. Following this discovery, Nobuyuki was hospitalized, initially considered a mentally disturbed patient. But once the police interviewed Husako and confirmed her identity, Nobuyuki was arrested the following month, facing criminal charges. Meanwhile, Husako was reunited with her parents, who were overjoyed yet overwhelmed to see their daughter after so long. The reunion was bittersweet, as they had to reacquaint themselves with the daughter who had grown and changed so much during her absence. Nonetheless, it was a profound relief for them to welcome Husako back into their loving embrace. In Nobuyuki's case, the prosecution pursued a lengthy prison sentence. Initially, his defense team argued that he was mentally unfit to stand trial. However, after psychiatric evaluations, he was deemed competent. The trial proceeded relatively quickly, resulting in Nobuyuki being sentenced to 14 years in prison on January 22, 2002. He appealed the sentence twice. The first appeal reduced his sentence by three years, but the second appeal upheld the original 14-year term. He was released in 2015 and passed away alone in his 50s. The impact of the kidnapping on Husako was profound and deeply traumatic. While her physical health eventually improved, her mental recovery was a longer, more challenging process. Rescuers noted that her mental state appeared to have been frozen in time, with a 19-year-old Husako still possessing the mentality of a 9-year-old. She became very timid, but she made efforts to adjust to normal life. Thankfully, Husako received a robust support system, including friends, neighbors, and family, helping to ease her transition back into society. It's a relief to report a somewhat positive outcome for Husako. 
She is now older and contributes to her family by working in a rice field. She continues to enjoy sports, a passion from her childhood. While the case remains a tragic reminder of the dangers that can befall children, Husako's resilience and eventual recovery highlight the importance of community support. This story underscores the need for vigilance in protecting our loved ones. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.